Welcome back. Today I want to talk about disassociation and association and how that plays into meditation and also daily life. And specifically, I'd like to give an idea of why disassociation might be a problem for some people. So if that's the case for you, I want to show why that might be and a very good way that you could reverse that. All right, so let's get into it. So the first thing that we have to do to talk about this is we need to elicit your timeline. This is how your unconscious mind holds time specifically just for you. So it's going to be a little bit different for everybody, but there's going to be two major archetypes. And but you don't need to know that just yet. All you need to do is go ahead and point to your past. Just just point any direction from you where you think your past might be. And once you've pointed in that direction, whichever direction that might be, now you know where your past is. And I have an idea that you probably pointed behind you, or you might have pointed to your left to point to your past. And if that was the case, either of those are great. If it's off to an angle, that's totally normal as well. And the next question is, go ahead and point to your future. So you might notice that you point in front of yourself, maybe off to an angle or another angle, or you might say it's right in front of me and it's way over on the right or way over on the left. Now that you know where your past and where your future might be, the next thing to do is go ahead and float right up above it. And you, you have to use your active imagination to do this. So float right up above it and then look with your own eyes down on your timeline. I want you to float up so high that you look down on your timeline and it kind of looks like a ruler or maybe even a pencil. Just float way, way, way up there. Let's try that right now. So if you found your timeline, notice that that forms a line, that past and that future, or that past and that future, or that past and that future, they form a line, right? Maybe it's in front of you, then you're looking through time. We call that through time. Maybe the line goes through you, then we say you are in time because time is going through you. So those are two archetypes that we talk about when it comes to the timeline. So now you notice those, that that is a line and I want you to float right up above it. Just float right way, way up above your timeline, looking through your own eyes and look down on your timeline and just float way up there. So it's like the size of a pencil. Just look down on your whole timeline and it's like a little pencil. And while you're floating way up there, notice how it feels up there because you were down here and oh my God, I have these bills and I have to go to work and my family and the holidays are coming up. All these things might be on top of you, but when you're way up there, you're kind of above it all, aren't you? And isn't that a good feeling? So just spend a few moments up there enjoying how good it feels to be above it all quite literally in your imagination. You are above it all, right? You are disassociated. So this is a very simple disassociation technique, isn't it? Very, very simple. You just float right up above all of the problems of life because they're all contained inside of your timeline. The past problems, the future problems, the problems of now, you just floated up above all of them. And doesn't it feel kind of good up there? Okay, now you're floating up there. Keep that good feeling and come on down. Just float right back down into your body, into this present moment. Just float right down. And maybe you can save some of that good feeling of being above it all, right? Just keep that good feeling as we move forward here. So a very simple disassociation technique. If you wanna try that before you sit in meditation, this would be a great exercise before you practice my favorite thing on earth, heart rate, variability, resonant breathing. 
That's when we put the heart and the breath in resonance together. So the breath comes in and the heart rate goes up a little bit. Breath goes out and we enjoy that as we stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system and the heart rate goes down very, very gently and naturally. That's heart rate variability resonance. And that's what I teach on this channel, of course. So before you do that, you might take a moment to just disassociate and just feel how good it feels up there above it all, right? Milton Erickson was a very famous hypnotherapist and he would tell his clients, just float yourself into the middle of nowhere. And they would, okay, they would do that. And he would always marvel, how do we know how to just float into the middle of, how do we know that, how to do that? Because he would just tell them, he wouldn't say, I don't know if you can do this. He would just tell them, go ahead and float out into the middle of nowhere. And they would float out into the middle of, and he would marvel every single time. That's, that's how deep a thinker he was, that he would marvel at that because Maybe you took some hypnosis classes and you just take it for granted. But Milton Erickson marveled that we have the capacity to float into the middle of nowhere at any time. Isn't that amazing? Now, some people disassociate a lot and it's a problem for them. So they're in a continuous state of disassociation. And so they can't function normally in their everyday life because they are always disassociated. So it gives them a number of social complications in their life. It, it makes dealing day to day a little hard for them. You can see in your own daily life and in our own psychology, if we are pressed up against all of our problems every day, all day, then we're a little bit manic, right? And if we're totally disassociated all the time, then we're just not there. And both of those are a problem. And so why would it be that you are stuck in a disassociation state if you're floating up there? So let's think about it. If you were to float up above and disassociate, and then that felt so good, and then you looked down on your life on that timeline, and you said, oh my goodness, there's so much stuff in this timeline. I don't want to go back down there then you might develop a problem of disassociation because there's so much junk in the timeline. And I've been there, right? I, I really understand this. There's so much junk in the timeline. You're like, I don't want to come down into that. So I'm just going to stay up here where it feels good. But of course, uh, daily life can be hard, driving a car, working heavy machinery. We want to be associated and in the moment when we do those things, right? So disassociation wouldn't be good at those times. And so... The solution, what is the solution? Well, the solution is timeline therapy. And we begin to clean up the whole entire timeline, the past, future anxiety, everything in the, in the moment as well, which is usually carried over from the past. We begin cleaning up all of those things and then reassociation. Oh, it feels good now because everything's clean and I can come back into the timeline and it's not a problem anymore. So if you're in that kind of a disassociation problem, this could be a very good solution for you. I have a couple videos on my channel about timeline therapy. You can connect with me and we can set up a timeline therapy session, clean all that up so that you can more easily reassociate with your moment to moment. For those of you where it's not a problem, play with it a little bit and see how good it feels to float up above all of our problems anytime you need a tiny little break. It's a fantastic little exercise to just throw into your life, have in your back pocket anytime you need a little break. One more thing I almost forgot. There are two conditions of timeline therapy. And the first is that you get consent from the unconscious mind. So you ask the unconscious mind, would it be all right to go ahead and let go of this negative emotion today and to have a conscious experience of it? You have to ask that first. So if you're going to follow along on the videos that I have on timeline therapy, which is great, if you're going to follow along, you have to make sure that it's okay with the unconscious mind. Because sometimes the unconscious mind has 
secondary gain going on and you have to resolve that before you can step into timeline therapy. The second thing is that you need to make sure you're above and before the very first event, all right? When you get above and before the very first event, that's part of the magic of timeline therapy. And when you meet those two conditions, timeline therapy works every single time. So I hope you love this. If you did, be sure to hit that bell down below so I can see all of you next time.